there, boys and girls. Miss G here. As you can tell, I'm not in our school garden. I'm actually in the woods for the weekend. And I thought this would be the perfect place to read you a story about fairy houses. Let's go read that book, come on. Make sure to stay to the very end of the video so you can check out the fairy house that I built in the woods today. The Fairy House Trilogy. This is actually a three part book, but today we're just gonna read the first story. Fairy Houses, written and illustrated by Tracy Kate. This summer, my parents decided we should leave the city and spend a week on a small island off the coast of Maine. They said there was something special for me on the island, something I would really like, but they wouldn't tell me what it was until we got there. Oh, I wonder what that something special is. As soon as we got off the boat, I tried to guess. Is it the lighthouse? Hmm. Those silly sandpipers on the beach? The seals? Our cottage? Later, when we went for a walk in the woods by our cottage, I discovered the secret my parents had been keeping. Fairy houses. People had built small houses for fairies to live in. Wow, look at those fairy houses. Oh, it looks like there's something on this tree right here. Let's read it. You may build houses small and hidden for the fairies, but please do not use living or artificial materials. Huh, artificial, that's a big word. That means something that doesn't come from nature. For example, plastic. I asked if I could build a fairy house. My dad said, yes, as long as I followed the rules of the woods. I scouted out places that would be just right for a fairy house. I chose a hollow at the base of an oak tree and collected some twigs, some leaves, and pieces of bark to build with. I finished the inside with a floor of dry grass and made a roof with fallen leaves. I hoped the fairies would choose my house for a place to live in. The next morning, I couldn't wait to visit the woods again to see if anyone might be sleeping inside my house. When I bent down to look, I heard chirping. Was a fairy snoring? What do you think is in her fairy house? Let's see. Hey, you're not a fairy, I said. You're a cricket. The cricket hopped off into a bush full of bright red berries. Maybe the fairies would like something to eat, I thought. I gathered a handful of berries from the ground and sprinkled them around my house. The following day, after visiting the lighthouse with my parents, I decided to check on my fairy house. I think it was a cricket. <laughs> A pair of finches were carrying the last berries away in their beaks. Searching the ground for more berries, I came to a small stream. The sound of the trickling water gave me an idea. I took some stones from my pack that I found near the lighthouse and arranged them in a circle near my fairy house. Then I filled the circle with water from the stream in case the fairies got thirsty or wanted to take a bath. I whispered the next day. At first, the house looked empty. Then I spied someone in the pool. I wanted to get a closer look at the frog as he bathed. Oops, I guess I got too close. As the frog leaped away, I could hear other frogs singing out to him. I started singing myself as I got to work, collecting acorns and pine cones. It was time to make some home improvements.
When I came back the next afternoon, I saw a squirrel nibbling on the nuts, but no fairies in sight. I just couldn't give up. I still hoped the fairies would visit my house. Maybe it needed a better entrance. In my pack were seashells and feathers my mom and I had found at the beach. I decorated the path leading up to the door. I thought about adding my shiny bracelet to one of the shells, hoping to catch a fairy's attention. But then I remembered the rules of the woods. The next morning, I got up very early when my parents were still asleep and tiptoed out of our cottage and into the woods. This was the day we would be leaving the island, so I had one last chance to visit my fairy house. A fog had rolled in off the ocean, covering the woods like a thick blanket. I could barely see. It was like walking in a cloud. The trees seemed huge and their branches looked like arms reaching out to grab me. Goosebumps started popping out on my arms and legs. Someone was watching me. I was sure. Should I turn around and run? Oh, but my fairy house was so close. It was then I heard footsteps moving towards my fairy house heart started thumping. I jumped behind a tree to hide. Uh oh, I wonder what's on our fairy house this time. I caught my breath. It was a deer licking the salty seashells. I stood perfectly still as she made her way lazily through the woods then vanished into the mist. Exhausted, I sat down near my fairy house, watching, waiting, and wishing for fairies to appear. The quiet of the woods and the soft mist made me sleepy. My eyelids felt heavy, but I tried not to fall asleep. Before long, the sun started breaking through the mist, and with it came a soft breeze. breeze seemed to whisper in my ear. Kristen, wake up, wake up, wake up. We can we only can stay, stay a moment. moment. Struggling to open my eyes, I saw a bright beam of light and a tiny smiling face. Oh my goodness. Look it. I think it's the fairies. We are the we fairies, are the fairies who, live who live in the spirits, in the spirits of, all of all the plants and animals, and animals in the woods, a voice said. Of all, all the, the houses here, here, the animals have chosen yours to visit. visit. You, have you have treated the woods, the woods with care and respect. And respect. Look quickly, Look quickly Kristen, Kristen, for this, for this is, a is a moment of magic, magic. When, the when the fairies will show themselves, show themselves as a way, as a way of thanking you. As the late morning sun started breaking through the mist, light beams illuminated the fairies. They sparkled like jewels. They became so bright, I had to close my eyes. When I opened my eyes, the fairies had changed into beautiful monarch butterflies. Butterflies fluttered around me like a great orange cloud, following me to the edge of the woods where the sun shone brightly. Wow. Check that out. Look at all those monarch butterflies. Yeah. 
I watch them dancing towards the light, higher and higher, squinting into the warm golden day. I smiled and waved as the last butterfly disappeared into the sky. like there's something in this corner. Shh! Over here! Turn this page to see some tips for building your own fairy house. Should we look at some tips? I think yeah. How to get started with your fairy house. Fairy houses can be created in many different places. Look for building spots near parks, fields, woods, beaches, and your own yard. Try to find a place away from roads or busy pathways. The base of a tree or the side of a rock would be just right. Sometimes you can find a place in low branches of a tree or bush. Close to the ground is best. You should only use natural materials to build the house. Dry grasses, pebbles, sticks, shells, feathers, seaweed, pine cones, and nuts are just some of the materials you can use. Be careful not to use or disturb any of nature's materials that are still living, such as flowers, ferns, mosses, or lichen. Fairies do not like to disturb anything that is growing. Many fairy houses look so natural, they are almost hidden. You can have fun building them any time of the year. Let's see some example fairy houses. Spring. Spring is a great time to build a fairy house in the woods. There are plenty of fallen branches and bark to get started with. Pine needles and leaves make good roofs and soft floors. Pine cones become trees and acorns a snack. A ladder made from twigs would, be, would tempt any fairy to climb up and peek inside. I'm in the woods today and I kind of built a fairy house like this. I'll show it to you in a little bit. Summer. Summer is perfect for making a fairy house at the beach. You can dig out a foundation in the wet sand and form it into walls. Driftwood makes good rafters and a seaweed roof keeps the rain out. Decorate it with shells and pebbles and it will sparkle in the sun. Adding a gold feather or two, blowing like flags in the breeze, will catch a fairy's eyes from far away. Look at that awesome fairy summer house. <laughs> and we, a lot of us live close to the beach, so maybe we can build this one. And it's summertime. Autumn. Autumn is the season to build a meadow fairy house. If you tie a clump of tall grasses together with a long blade of grass, it can look like a teepee. Dry Queen's Anne's Lace always makes a grand impression. Thistles become a sturdy guards. Wait, thistles become sturdy guards, protecting the entrance to the house. And don't forget what a wonderful bed a milkweed pod can make. Irresistible to sleepy fairies. Hopefully you've been collecting some treasures from the woods, beach, and meadow to add to the fairy house you are building in your yard. This could be your best fairy house since you can check on it every day changing things to make home improvements. And you can keep a watch over it all year long, even in winter. Wow, I think I want to make one at my house too. The end. Wow, I love this book and I also love building fairy houses. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book and I hope you guys go outside and build your own fairy house. Remember to follow the rules of the woods and only use natural materials and not disturbing anything that's living because we want to respect nature and it'll make the fairies very happy. All right, bye. Can you spot my fairy house? Yeah, it's right there. I chose the base of a tree. 
and I followed the rules of the woods when I built my fairy house. I gave the fairies a little walkway, a roof, and I used pine needles that I found on the ground. I didn't cut off from living trees. I tried making a pool for them for when it rains and a water slide. What do you think of the fairy house, Mr. Bo? <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, my name is, uh, 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 uh I forget. <laughs> <laughs>